Are you happy with the work you've done at the IFSB? Do you think the IFSB will survive your personality, given the fact that you are a very erudite, very uh, cosmopolitan man who's been able to achieve an amazing thing in the Islamic finance world, which is to bring the whole world together to sit on the table at the regulatory front. Um, you know, in a way, it requires someone of, it's still at a stage where it requires something of your personality to continue driving it. I think the work of the IFSB now speaks for itself. In eight years, you know, we have increased our membership, we have issued 14 standards, you know, uh, we have gained a lot of recognition and respect, you know, uh, whether it's the IMF, the World Bank, the BIS, the Asian Development Bank, the Islamic Development Bank, these are all our members, right? And I think it adds to our credibility at the IFSB. Uh, I'm happy that the IFSB now can stand on itself, you know, but also the support of its members is very important, you know, and we managed to mobilize that support, you know. I think we have been providing the members with quality work, right? that made them happy to continue supporting us. Right. Well, how would you differentiate what the IFSB has been achieving and the, um, the Association of Islamic Accounting, the ISO? Accounting, uh, Auditing and Organizing. Okay, the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institution, uh, they issue accounting, auditing standards and recently Sharia standards. The IFSB, those prudential ones, you know, their work, uh, tends to complement that of the International Accounting Standards Board, the International Auditing and Who Assurance. Who is closer to the business? Um, is it the accounting standards or the prudential standards? Wouldn't that so be two different aspects of it? Because in a business, you need the accounting and auditing, right? But you also need the regulatory aspects. I don't think these, they are mutually exclusive. And at which point uh, do you think that it be, the IFSB model becomes an enforceable model? It becomes like the BIS almost. Well, the Basel Committee now, as you know, uh, they are a member of the Financial Stability Board. And the Financial Stability Board is a driving force now, uh, trying to push all the international standard setting body to implement, you know, to issue standards and have them implemented, right, in order to enhance the safety and stability of the safety and soundness of the financial stability, you know. Uh, in our case, right, as I said earlier, it's the high quality of the standards that hopefully you know, others will recognize it, given the increase in the percentage of this industry in the financial service in their own jurisdictions. We're having this conversation at a time when there's great change taking place in the Middle East today. How do you read those changes? And what do you think will be the next two or three steps that will define the Middle East? Uh, and how would that affect financial services? At the IFSB, we tend to be apolitical, you know, because we, I mean, we deal with central banks and, you know, uh, security regulators and insurance regulators, right? Whatever political impact it has on the financial service, right, we tend to adapt to it. But right? at the same time, there's going to be a very profound political impact because a number of these societies would probably want to become even more Islamic than they are right now. And it might see the proliferation of greater Islamic institutions um, you know, in a number of um, the Middle East countries. Where they the only impact I see is that if that will lead to, for example, uh, more demand for Islamic products, right, then you have to provide institutions to do that because you don't want them also to be financially excluded. You know, financial inclusion is an important aspect. You need them to be them within the formal system rather than outside the system, right? So if, if that is the case, then it may lead to more uh, institutions, which may lead to be licensed in order to cater for that demand, to provide financial inclusion, you know. That will then even put a demand for the work of the IFSB because, as I said earlier, you know, the more you, the percentage of your industry is providing Islamic finance, the more you will be looking at the IFSB for harmonization of the potential aspects. Let's conclude by describing the job of your successor. In what sense? What do you expect your successor to continue on and, and, and build on what you've done? Well, I trust that, you know, during the last eight years, we have provided a lot of the foundations for the IFSB. The next stage will be to maintain and develop, you know, uh, the IFSB to cater for perhaps the new changes that are taking place, you know, 
uh, it needs to keep that momentum, right? Uh, and so that would be my expectations. Professor Fayed, thank you very much for spending my time. My pleasure. <laughs>